So we're having a very special uh, episode of the Buffy Fest uh, vlog where I review all the Buffy comics that are coming out. Why is it special? Is it special because Jesse Spano is addicted to caffeine pills? No. It's special because I'm here in uh, scenic Los Angeles, California, uh, visiting Ivan and Michelle, who m maybe you know. Uh, maybe not, but you know me. And so we'll jump right in with the first review, which is going to be for Buffy at uh, number 29. And in case you're wondering what the cover looked like, maybe you live under a rock. There it is. Boom. Uh, so what did I think of this issue? Uh, it's all right. Um, not one of my favorite issues. I still would maintain that Jane Espenson is probably the best writer for comics in uh, the Buffy series thus far. But uh, one of the things that really bothers me is that some of the character interactions don't ring true. Um, I think there's a weird sort of balance because what we see in this issue, and if you haven't read it, uh, I guess this will be a spoiler alert for you, um, is now the Slayers and uh, Oz and his wife and, uh, and Andrew and the rest are all fighting against the military using like weapons like torpedoes and guns and it just seems very false because I think back to season four when the last time they had to fight off the army they used like peace you know they would just be, like sort of like a zen kind of concept so it's strange to me to see them go from that to now all of a sudden um, answering violence with the same exact kind of violence is just shocking to me and I'm not really convinced that Buffy would necessarily do that. And if she is doing that, I'm not sure that we're meant to believe that that's the right thing that she's doing. Do you know what I mean? Uh, otherwise, I like that uh, Willow is really questioning the nature of things, wondering why it is that they're giving up their powers, because that is a good question. Even though they're able to hide, is hiding what they should be doing? Or should they be having, like, a magic attack? I mean, what that's the whole idea, right? Twilight wants to get rid of magic. So why are they giving him exactly what he wants? Uh, I don't really understand that. So I like Willow a lot in that issue. I like Andrew in that issue. Uh, the Xander Dawn thing, it's, uh, I'm sorry, it's nasty. Uh, I know that some people are comfy with it, some people looking forward to it. Um, I, no, I, I don't like it at all. Uh, pretty terrible. I, I'll leave it at that. Um, as for the cliffhanger, where all of a sudden these goddesses came out of the ground, it's okay. You know, I don't want to judge it yet because, you know, it, it, could, it could go either way. Maybe it'll be great. It looks kind of lame so far, though. Let's be honest, right? Not so cool. Uh, but hey, it could be super great. And hopefully next issue we'll find out who uh, Twilight is. <clears throat> Angel. Uh, but we'll see. And, and speaking of that, that thing that I coughed underneath my breath, we'll, we'll go to the next uh, comic, which is uh, Angel. You can see we're being very professional here. Uh, number 26. Now this, I would say, is probably the better of the two issues that was released um, by far. Uh, and I'm not just saying that because I'm, you know, it's not just because I like Brian Lynch. I think he's a swell cat, although he's a, just, he's a decent human being, I've heard. I mean, I don't know. Um, but the issue is great. I think that um, taking Angel and Spike and putting them at a big name comic book convention is probably one of the best ideas that I've seen. Especially since we've seen a lot of dark days in the Angel comics recently. Not a lot of happy stuff going on. So it's nice to tell a sort of upbeat comedic story. And to take a call back to an old uh, Buffy episode. The concept is that all of the people attending the uh, convention, all the costumes they're wearing, they then become those costumes, right? And if you're thinking that it harkens back to... Um, the second season Buffy Halloween episode, well, guess what? You're right. That's exactly what it is. It's the same concept. It's even the same uh, God of Chaos that they use. And you get to see a little bit of everything. So it's a real comics comic because people have, like, comic-style superpowers. So there's a little bit of superhero book in there. There's a nice throwback to stuff that happened during Spike After the Fall. So if you were reading that, you'll feel like, hey, great, I read that for a reason, which is always appreciated, I think. And... Um, as a bonus to that, I think they um, they really kind of nail fans who are obsessed with canon by uh, by kind of making fun of the whole canon issue. There's a whole segment, I believe. There's a it's a preview of that, which is great. Um, kind of rambling. It's definitely the better of the two. Uh, I think Steve Mooney does a great job with the art there, um, and I think that Brian is on top of his game. So we'll see the second half of that next month, and then we'll get a chance to see Last Angel in Hell, which will be the Angel Annual. Um, which will be like a nice double-length book, which is sort of like that super big Bruckheimer-esque movie version of like what a writer in Hollywood would imagine 
happened. Uh, so that's something that you have to pre-order in order to guarantee if you're, especially if you're in a smaller comic book shop. Um, so pre-order it if you haven't. And I think that's going to be really spectacular. And uh, before we wrap up, I want to bring an attention to one last thing that came out at the same time, um, which we had a chance to talk about a couple months back uh, with Scott Alley. It's a book called Exerbia. And it's a graphic novel. It's 10 bucks. Interesting art. Um, I mean, I wasn't going to say this, but I think you kind of would have to be like a douche not to buy it because it's really topical. It's like it's got a nice political angle to it. It does a really great job of asking a lot of good philosophical questions, and it's got a good sense of humor to it, too. And Scott Alley's been working on it for a really long time. Like, do you ever have a story that's, like, in your head for a really long time, and you just, like, you never quite find a place for it, and then one day you finally put it out into the world? Well, imagine that. Buy it for Scott Alley. Ten bucks. I mean, why not? You basically would have to be a douchebag not to buy it. Do you know what I mean? So, there you go. If you had not picked up a copy of Exerbia and you don't want to be considered a douchebag in my eyes, you should get it. And uh, and that's it. If you want to take a look, there's a, a fine Hollywood sign. There's no uh, a blue or green screen uh, required. And a uh, big shout out to, um, to uh, the two comic book shops that I visited while I was here. Uh, Secret Headquarters and Meltdown Comics. So you should check out both of them. I'll put a link uh, down in the article. And, uh, and take a look, especially if you're in this area. They're both definitely worth checking out. So thank you for uh, joining me. Uh, and uh, holy crap. See you later. <laughs>